yes <clears throat> you can stop live streaming uh, go ahead and i generally walk for 5 to 6 miles a day in the house very very important actually very important yes. and especially uh, some good exercise of yoga gives you a lot of flexibility actually Yeah. That's what we. I am telling so that a lot of youngsters listening, they must pick up this uh, habit. Once it becomes a habit, then you wherever you are, you only live it. Right. Some nice uh, thing because the flexibility of your body is so important. Yeah. Uh, Shankar, shall we go ahead? On air. It's an on air, sir. He said recording paused. Okay. <clears throat> okay go ahead uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, good morning my dear students uh, it's a warm welcome to each one of you this uh, event uh, which you are uh, telecasting this morning is exclusively designed uh, custom made uh, only for the students uh, for their benefit actually while all the large number of members do watch this is totally focused on students and uh, i must thank uh, dr manu hora who gave me this idea he is joining us from usa chicago and he has been a great source of inspiration for us because he is love to in, in interact with the students and share his knowledge of over 40 years of experience is what makes us uh, really inspiring so we want to bring it to you we have to bring it to you at 9 o'clock because uh, we have to do it in certain time in spite of that uh, dr wara has to be awake till late midnight uh, to keep talking to you while uh, i will introduce the subject and dr wara shut while ago i also want to tell you uh, especially the students who are watching the program you will be logging on the same id to watch the, some of the program what i'm going to tell you because they're all not to be missed even because to, today you have to be smart enough to do that uh, you should know how to how to really uh, be knowledgeable in all sectors of uh, where we have life now uh, we have a talk uh, on the 27th before that on the 26th we have an interesting talk which we don't want to miss you we is uh, the galwan clash uh, india uh, china strategy and china's great game because you keep hearing them reading the newspaper what's happening we want you to hear from uh, some of the best thought leaders on this subject we have admiral arun prakash who is a former chief of naval staff and we have uh, 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 mr mohan guruswami who is an economist a former member of parliament and also he was advisor to the finance minister then then we also uh, ambassador patasardi who was former I indian high commissioner to uh, pakistan general kamal dawar he was a director general of intelligence and army at corus uh, earlier then we also have air marshal mateshwaran he is uh, one of the finest test pilot who was extensively flown in this area they these are the five gentlemen going to discuss on this issue so you will have a lot of insights from them what exactly went wrong what is happening what should be india strategy where it happen though you hear study a lot in the newspaper it is good to hear from them in a lively discussion and you have any doubt you have a chance to ask them questions uh, so do log in uh, this happening uh, on the 26th evening at 6 o'clock the same login id but the zoom login id is different uh, all the students are required to log in uh, in other three uh, live webcast uh, link then Uh, on the 27th again uh, that is tomorrow we have excellent uh, talk by uh, mr prasad former uh, ceo of camps he going to be talking to us uh, what it needs to be investing in india and what your people who, who are connected with you the investor may not tell you so that you should be sure about many a time the investor don't tell you what should be done actually so that is an issue what uh, happening then uh, we have again a talk uh, on uh, 1st of july from kriti jay kumar then debashish shakkar is again is coming a good friend of us and good friend of mr mano then we got lined up programs almost uh, till december so i don't want to uh, no keep engaging you with lots of events but all outstanding events most of the events are online i urge upon you keep engaged develop the habit of listening to the people you listen to pure wonderful talk like the one we are going to happen today it will make you more wiser more smarter you will become it will become a continuous online learning i know so many of our individual members uh, our members also watching this program because they want to be a learner and all through continuous learning makes you a lifelong learner coming to today's topic is the leadership excellence one thing uh, is uh, common and from the time i remember when i joined in uh, air force academy uh, one thing which is imbibed on us uh, the quality of leadership if we have a leadership quality every action every moment of ours are watched for our leadership quality today in armed forces if leadership fails or thing fails but today in the society we have some issues uh, like we have some issues in terms of uh, even covid testing covid treatment hospital administration all this revolves around leadership 
if a good leader is there you can see some of our districts where the excellent leaders are there they produce some outstanding results wherever leadership vacuum is there there's an issue so leadership is what we lack today in, in our community so we have to develop all the traits what your leader requires and leadership excellence not only you develop the traits you have to do how to, how to exceed and excel as a leader so here uh, one of the leader who has done so much of years of experience on this and is going to be talking to us on leadership excellence dr manu ora dr manu uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining live from chicago it's an india pleasure uh, let me have the privilege of briefly introducing dr manu ora dr manu ora is the chairman and the president of business excellence uh, in usa chicago is a global quality management company in usa he's got over 45 years of experience uh, uh, guiding fortune 500 companies in a big way associated with over 80 educational institutions around the world in 2016 Uh, appointed as a full bright scholar for us uh, department of state and is a is a beta graduate from iit iit bhubaneswar uh, and is also a ms and phd in chemical engineering and also an mba in marketing uh, from chicago university and he's also a past president of asq and asq fellow and uh, sought after speaker all around the world with over 1000 presentations to his credit in 17 countries in uh, five continents act and published a uh, number of publications over 70 articles and a number of honors and awards uh, to his credit and for his outstanding professional contribution and life learning uh, lifelong community services and you are the person whom i am going to present to you dr manu ora such a great achiever please listen to him and uh, i know is uh, the, the insight what is going to share with you is going to be an outstanding uh, thing in your future endeavor so as usual if you have any questions please send it by whatsapp to the number which is flashing on your screen and all this uh, viewers are watching on zoom long, logged in please send your questions through a chat box keep asking questions this is the time uh, is good because we are all in a close short group nobody going to laugh at you it's better to ask your questions so that rather than you ask some questions outside where people laugh at you let's do that and be a great learner and looking forward to hearing you uh, dr manuvara over to you dr manuvara okay thank you uh, thank you captain uh, vijay kumar ji for your very kind introduction and i want to congratulate you and your team captain uh, dr venkat raman uh, mr sundar and mr shankar for tremendous support to take my six sessions on uh, soft skills program and i am very delighted to connect with the students and faculty to share some of my thoughts on the subject of critical importance and this is an evergreen subject uh, so let me begin the sharing the presentation so the road map for uh, this morning session is about uh, i'll begin with uh, a simple quote on leadership and then focus on what's the role of leadership and the management in the context of the current situation which is the change required in the society and around the world i want to share with you several frameworks and the models some of the good ones i have seen over the years and after the frameworks are established i will share with you a road map for leadership excellence some best practice examples from wonderful companies like google and japos etc uh, some good references and uh, we'll uh, wrap it up at the end of the presentation we'll take the question and answer through the chat box and other channel where uh, captain vijay kumar ji will pose the question to me and i'll try to do my best to answer the questions you have raised so this is one of the model i developed as a part of the fulbright specialist project at my alma mater iit banaras hindu university in varanasi and uh, to get the maximum benefit from this soft skills program and to understand the leadership students have to be involved in their own learning and once they learn they need to start applying what they have learned and then they should share that with their colleagues and others because by sharing we get to learn from each other much better so this is a simple model involve learn apply and share now let's begin with a simple quote from lao tzu from china he says a leader is best when people barely know he exists of course in those days it was only he but you can substitute he slash she 
not so good when people obey and acclaim him and worst when they despise him but of a good leader who talks little when his work is done his aim fulfilled they will say we did this ourselves so what do the leaders do they try to first recognize what's the need of the day need of the hour and they try to provide the right resources to achieve the organization objective by working through people and they stay behind they are there to support their people remove the obstacles and ensure that the people have the right skills they have the right ability to get things done now uh, this is a very important slide to keep in mind the change management which is the only constant in life is the change of course we know during the covid pandemic we are all experiences transformational change the way we used to do work before covid and now during covid and post covid there are different phases and we need to get used to what is coming to us and try to take advantage of the situation and do our best to manage the change and that requires leadership and what do the leaders do they initiate the change and then they establish direction help in the overall planning they align the people motivate and inspire people to start the change journey and the management role is needed but on a smaller scale leadership is required 75 to 90% of the time management which brings the predictability and order for 10 to 25% and they do standard uh, management functions those are the planning and budgeting organizing and staffing controlling and problem solving now there is a beautiful quote from dr stephen covey a management think tank he has written number of books on management and leadership uh, so the leadership uh, books he has written one of them we are going to cover shortly in the framework uh, is the seven habits of highly effective people so what dr kavi is saying there's a difference between effectiveness and efficiency management is efficiency in climbing the ladder of success but the leadership determines whether the ladder is leaning against the right wall in other words you want to first have the effectiveness which is done by the leaders and then management takes over and takes that direction the effectiveness direction and implements it in an efficient way if it is in the reverse order it will not be useful to the organization or anybody you are going in the wrong direction very quickly now here is an interesting picture difference between a boss versus a leader and i'm sure uh, <clears throat> those who are working in different arena those who are still in the uh, uh, university but doing some internship etc you will come across different type of people some are bosses like shown on the left and some you work with are leaders real leaders which are shown on the right so what do the boss display they want to be out in the front try to command that they are the boss they drive the employees a lot of times they drive people crazy they depend on their authority create fear uh, they are always i place the blame when something doesn't go well they know how it is done they use the people take away all the credit when good things happen for them is commanding people and they say just go and do it whereas leader is the one the pink fish among the blue fishes the the leader is more like a coach employees uh the leader depends on the goodwill of people he generates he or she generates the enthusiasm by saying we will do it fixes the breakdown shows how it is done the goal of the leader is to develop people give credit to other people always ask people what do you think about it and that's a very motivating thing and he will say let's go so leader is part of the effort rather than standing in the front and barking orders 
So I hope along the way, when you move up in the hierarchy, try to be a leader, not a boss, because people despise bosses, but they love and uh, respect the leaders. Uh, this particular link is shared here. Uh, when you see the recording, uh, you can uh, Google search leadership, that mysterious talent. It'll give you so many different ideas what the great leaders do. So we are going to skip this in the interest of uh, the time, as well as the current situation on the YouTube. Now I want to share with you some of the great global leaders. Uh, we start with our own Swami Vivekananda from the top left. Uh, so he came to Chicago and spoke on sub September 11, 1893, the first parliament of world religion. And uh, during his lecture, the entire audience was electrified. And he made a simple comment that the religion of the East and religion of the West they ultimately are leading to the same path. It's a different ways of going to the same destination. And uh, along the way, he visited many places in the US and uh, after coming back to India, established the Ramakrishna mission. And we are so delighted to be connected with the Ramakrishna mission through our Blind Foundation for India work, where they are serving people who are blind in India, irrespective of race, creed and religion. Next, Nelson Mandela, he was in prison for 24 years, very badly treated in solitary confinement. After he came out without any bitterness, he worked with the white people and became the first president of the African National Congress and the first president there. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, he comes from the state of Illinois, so we live in the land of Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln gave his life to keep the Union intact, the North and South not separating during the Civil War. Our own Mahatma Gandhi again gave his life to get the British rule uh, away from India uh, through nonviolence, and he paid the price with his own life. Bottom left to right, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the president during the depression time in the 1930s, when almost 30 to 40% of the people had lost everything, job, they did not have the bread on the table. He came up with so many social programs, which essentially started putting people to work. And then bottom right, John F. Kennedy, the young president who made a simple statement that, and he had a vision to put a man on the moon. Because of his vision, NASA created a mission to the moon and Neil Armstrong landed up on the moon within eight years after the vision was proclaimed. Two gentlemen in the middle bottom, Dr. W. Edward Deming and Dr. Joseph Juran are the two scientists who are known as the father of quality management. They were sent by the US government to help Japan to rebuild its industrial economy after World War II. These two gentlemen taught Japanese how to do quality improvement, process improvement, et cetera. And since Japan had lost everything, they listened to them. And as a result, they are now producing one of the finest electronics and automobiles in the world. So other than Japan, U.S. was not listening either to Dr. Deming or Dr. Juran, but their productivity started falling. And in the early 80s, they started working with Dr. Deming and Dr. Juran. And I had a chance to take a class, public class with Dr. Deming for four days in California. And of course, Dr. Juran was consulting with AT&T Bell Labs, where we had invited him to meet with about 200 uh, supervisor, manager, management people for two-day program in New Jersey. So if serving is below you, leadership is beyond you. So remember, leadership is all about serving. It's not about bossing. 
Now I'm starting the several frameworks and the models. The first one we are looking at is the seven habits paradigm from Dr. Stephen Covey. So the, according to Dr. Covey, when you start, initially you need to focus on three habits and those habits are, and let me just move this thing out of the way, be proactive, one, secondly, begin with the end in mind, and three, put first thing first. When you master those three habits, you have achieved the private victory and you are moving from dependence to independence. Once you come to workplace, then you need to focus on habit number four, five, and six. Habit four is think win-win. Five, seek first to understand and then to be understood, very important and habit six, synergize. Once you master those three additional habits, you achieve the public victory and move from independence to interdependence. And in the habit, habit seven, you sharpen the show. That means you keep repeating what you have done before. So this excellent book, Seven Habits Paradigm, will allow you to become very, very effective in anything and everything you do, both professionally and personally. May I request people to mute their video, uh, kindly mute your video. Now, uh, people were asking Dr. Kavi that you wrote a book on seven habits of highly effective people. What about the greatness? So he wrote the next book called The Eighth Habit. And the habit eight, the focus is to move from effectiveness to greatness. And how do you achieve that? You have to listen to your inner voices and allow others to listen to their inner voices. Now, uh, there are two graphics, so let's work through them. On the left side, there is a new age of civilization. So in the old days, very old days, people were hunting and gathering. Then they moved to the agriculture economy. 1801 steam engine was invented in UK and the world was ushered into the industrial age. And then around 1968, we have moved to the information and knowledge economy. And eventually the goal is that we will all be looking for wisdom. Now, a whole person paradigm, the graphics on the right says that in order to be effective and in order to move to the greatness, one need to engage their mind, body, spirit, and the heart. When we engage all four of them, then you are fully engaged as a whole person and you can begin to move from effectiveness to greatness. Now, finding your own voice, use your own birth gifts and find and express your voice through your vision, the passion, the conscious and the discipline. On the left bottom, there is a table which shows that most of the organization will have some chronic problems and which can be identified and worked on through engaging your spirit, mind, body and the heart. And what do the leaders need to do? They have so many roles to play. One, pathfinding, modeling, empowering, and aligning people. When the leaders do those four roles, the leadership provides a great direction and a great motivation to people in the organization. And the entire organization moves in the right direction. Next model is tipping point leadership. Now, this is the work done in the public sector by a gentleman uh, from uh, Boston and New York area. And uh, the person worked in the public sector for almost 25 years. And the story is written up by two faculty from the INSEAD, the Harvard of Europe outside of uh, Paris in France. So William Bratton uh, was the superintendent of police and he also worked at the Boston Mass Transit, Boston Police Department. 
Then he came to New York, managing New York mass transit, uh, the railway connecting internally within the city and New York Police Department. So the story goes, according to the article, in 1990, New York was the murder capital of the world. Now, during that time, there were robberies and mugging going on during the daylight times. So in order to tackle that situation, uh, William Bratton decided to put the problems in front of their people. So he instructed all his managers not to take the car to come to work. Instead, ride the subway, the train. The moment the managers started riding the subway on the train, they realized how horrific the situation was. So by putting people in front of the problem, he overcame the first hurdle, which is cognitive hurdle. And once people see the issue and they accept there is an issue, then you can begin to move towards the solution. So these are the four hurdles organization will face. The second hurdle is the limited resources. So William Bratton was very clever. There was one precinct where there was a big issue with narcotics, the drugs, illegal use of the drugs. So he temporarily infused a large uh, police force to tackle the problem, get the good results, and then disperse that resource to the next big issue in other precincts. So prioritizing the resources, you overcome the resource hurdle. The third hurdle is the motivation hurdle. He had 80 precincts. And what happens was they had a weekly meeting where all the captains of the 80 precincts and the top brass will be at one location reviewing the work and the progress they have made. So one or two captains, precinct captains who had achieved great results, he will allow them to present their story, which will motivate the others by the peer pressure. So he was putting a spotlight on people who had done great work to overcome the motivation hurdle. And the fourth item is the political hurdle. So I'm sure a lot of time in the organization you hear when something new needs to be done that no, we have tried this, it didn't work and it will not work again. So let's not worry about it. So what he did, he was very clever. So William Bratton came up with a strategy to combat the rampant issue of lawlessness in New York. He said, let's have a policy, one strike and you are out. In other words, if you commit a small crime of stealing a loaf of bread or you commit a major crime of uh, doing a murder, in both cases, you go behind bar immediately. So the people who were managing the prison system, they got very upset because they did not have enough capacity to fill up the prison with the new people coming in because it will be flooded. The William Bratton kept Rudy Giuliani, who was the mayor at that time for the city of New York. He convinced the mayor. Mayors understood the issue and gave full support. So what happened first year, there was a spike in number of cases, people being put in behind the bar. But second year onwards, that whole thing started subsiding and coming down. And now New York is not the murder capital of the world. So what the learning from this tipping point leadership is that in on any organization, there'll be these four hurdles always present. It's the role of the leaders to overcome these hurdles by putting people in front of the problem, prioritizing the resources, motivating people through peer pressure and keeping higher ups on your side to silence the naysayers. Next model is from Jack Welch. He wrote a book on how to be a good leader. This is after he retired from General Electric GE. Uh, so he says the leaders upgrade their team. They not only see the vision, but they live and breathe it. Leaders also exude positive energy and optimism. The leaders trust the car trust with candor, transparency, and they are willing to give credit. They have a courage to make unpopular decisions. 
and the real role of the leader is to probe and push and get the answers on the projects the people are working with. Leaders inspire risk-taking and they lead by example and they celebrate when good things happen. Good book, title winning. Next is a framework from Jim Collins, a researcher from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. He studied well over 1400 good companies and examined their financial performance over 40 years and companies from 1985 to 2001, which gave 300% better return than the average. He put together a metaphor, which is captured here. And the metaphor is put the right people on the bus and give them freedom to drive the bus in the right direction. In other words, when you are having a critical issue in the organization, first look for disciplined people, give them freedom to do disciplined thinking. And out of that, they will come out with one or two critical issues to focus on and take action. And when they take action on those critical issues, they are going to begin to build the greatness and in terms of practical example, I would put Tata organization, Tata, Son, Tata Sons in India, they are moving in this direction. And we have a couple of uh, organization here in the US. One is a Southwest Airlines, which is employee owned and uh, employees make all the decisions. Another one is a company called Walgreens, which dispenses medication for the prescription. There again, they focus more on employees and they are touted as a great company to work for. Tim Collins wrote another article published in the Harvard Business Review called Level 5 Leadership. So let's review what are the levels. Level 1 is a highly capable individual. Level 2, contributing team member. Level 3, competent manager. Level four, effective leader, still not reach the level five leadership, according to Jim Collins. Level five executive, according to Collins, is the combination of humility and will. By humility, he means that when something good happens, the leader is giving credit to everybody who was involved. And when something goes bad, the leader will assume all the blame without blaming anybody else. And the will means when the decisions are made and the objectives are set for the organization to achieve the key strategies, that executive will prevail at all costs to achieve the objectives and get the great value for the organization. And by the way, level five executives are not there for their personal publicity. They are there to promote the organization, support their people, and they stay behind. They are not there in the limelight at all. Now, when he wrote this article through his research, he found only 4% of the Fortune 500 CEOs would qualify for level five leadership. And one of the examples he cited in this article was a CEO of a company called Kimberly Clark, in Wisconsin, state of Wisconsin, which produces all the paper goods, including the diapers for the babies. And uh, he was a lawyer. He was diagnosed with a terminal cancer. He went to the board of directors and requested that give me a chance. I'll manage the company and take it to a new height. And uh, sure enough, he beat the odd of survival of the terminal cancer and he took the company to a highest level under his leadership. So he was truly a level five executive. Next, what we are seeing here is the Lincoln on leadership. And this is the book with the exactly same title, Lincoln on leadership. And uh, there are uh, several lines which are color coded and I'll focus on those. So the story is this, this book is written about President Abraham Lincoln's time in the White House during which the Civil War broke out because the Southern part of United States wanted to keep the slavery. That means African-American people who were working in their 
plantations on the agriculture uh, work they wanted to keep the slaves whereas the northern part of us which was more focused on industrial production and not interested in keeping the slavery so the civil war broke out both sides started to fight with each other unfortunately the northern part did not have much militia or the military that focus on industry and production only southern part where they had lot many plantation they had a tremendous amount of army under their command so the first job president lincoln had to do was to recruit the people to build up the army and each and every new recruit will pass through washington dc the capital of the united states and president himself will get out of the white house and meet and greet the troops who were coming to serve the northern part of the united states so the goal of the leader should be not to sit in the ivory tower but to circulate among their people and see at first hand what are the issues and what he or she can do to remove the obstacles secondly the item 3 president lincoln was very big on persuading people and never do the coercing he was known as a honest ape so for him honesty and integrity were his hallmark the best policies for him uh <clears throat> he was leading by being led he was truly a level 5 leader share credit when good thing happened and took the all the blame when something did not work out item 11 is very interesting he summarily fired within less than a year seven generals one after the others because people wanted a title but they did not want to fight at the battlefield because of the split loyalty their relatives or friends were fighting on the other side so they did not have the capacity or interest to fight president understood that and he fired their generals seven in a row then he came upon general grant was very determined a great tactician and strategist and he won the war for north south had to surrender and the united states remain intact united states of america president lincoln was master at the art of public speaking if you do google about the gettysburg address it was just four and a half minute a uh, side speech he delivered at a cemetery to dedicate the lives of the soldiers who fought to keep the nation intact and not to split up and he was master of storytelling so the leaders are the one who tell the great stories to inspire people what they share the folklore where they have come from where they are going and those stories are very motivating to people a wonderful book about leadership we can learn from president lincoln during his time at the during the civil war while he was in the white house a leader is somebody that can lift others into their better selves and also leader is someone who creates more leaders not just the followers now i want to share with you a model and a framework from a person by name mark murphy he wrote a book called 100 percenters he consults with the google and microsoft of the world here on the y axis we have challenge on the x axis emotional connection the four quadrants in order to be 100% leader you need to be in the top right quadrant so here you give challenging assignment to your people but at the same time you are emotionally connected top left there is a challenge all right but no emotional connection those are the intimidator or a dictators bottom right no challenge no emotional very much emotional connection that's a peaser nothing is getting done so those are the country club people and bottom left no challenge no emotional connections you want to avoid that i had a chance to write a short 
leadership paradigm and post it as a blog and then written up in LinkedIn. I'm talking about economic value creation on the Y axis and empathy on the X axis. There are four quadrants. So let's begin in the top right quadrant, which is servant leadership. Focus on sacrifice and service. You can count very few on your fingertip. So this is where Swami Vivekananda, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr., etc., will come in that category. Top left, value leadership, focus on growth and profit. This is where the C-suite comes in play. In general, the top level people in the C-suite have a very small window of time to show their value. And they are not very much emotionally connected or they don't have empathy for their people. In short time, two to three years, at least in the Western world, if they cannot deliver the value, they will be asked to leave. Of course, they bail out with a golden parachute and sometimes platinum parachute as decided on the contract before they joined. On the bottom right, knowledge leadership. So all the faculty, those who are teaching, uh, they come into this category and their focus is caring and sharing. What they do is take the rough diamonds, the students who are coming in, they are all have a great potential. And the role of the faculty is to remove the <clears throat> thing which is hiding their potential and keep them shining, keep them polishing until they shine by the time they are ready to join the workforce and enter the workplace. Bottom left is a bad news position leadership where the front and middle level misuse the power and play the politics. The research shows that the people leave the organization when they cannot have good relationship with the immediate supervisor or the manager at the entry level. So it's very important to understand that we need to focus on the right level of leadership and as much as possible, if we have servant leaders in the organization, that organization will thrive and grow very well. Now I come to a very important slide, Roadmap for Leadership Excellence. It requires your own willingness, personal commitment, involvement and accountability that you want to be a leader. And in order to become a great leader, you need to have some feedback to understand your own behaviors because occasionally we do things which could have a negative impact on others and we don't know about it because we are blindsided. Therefore, having that feedback to understand our own behavior is very important. In most of the organization here, at least in the Western world, we have a 360 degree feedback for all the management people, which is generally 10% of the entire workforce. And this is where few people on the customers, few on the supplier side, few people from the superior, few subordinate and few colleagues or the coworkers at the management level give the feedback. That feedback gets analyzed looking for two top areas of strengths and one or two areas for improvement. Once that analysis is done, person will make a short-term and long-term plan to focus on ensuring the strengths are remaining as a strengths. An area for improvement can be showed up by having ed additional education and training to build up your skills, integrate it in your work and start applying. Nurture yourself by doing personal change and behavioral change. Continue to regularly evaluate on a quarterly basis how you are working against the short-term and long-term action plans. And when you achieve good results, you must celebrate the success. So this is a very important slide. We call it a $64,000 slide, Roadmap for Leadership Excellence. Now I'm sharing with you uh, some of the core competencies of leadership as put together by the U.S. Baldrige Performance Excellence Framework, which was established back in 1988, uh, 87. It was established by the Act of 
congressional law under President Reagan. And in 1988, they started giving out awards to the best of the best organization in manufacturing service and small business to start. Small business means 250 people working or less. Over the years, in 2001, they added education into it, 2002, healthcare, 2007, nonprofit, including government agencies at the local, state, and federal level. So the leadership requires these core competencies quickly. These are the ones they need to set the vision, mission, and values. Vision is a long-term dream for the organization. Mission is a path to achieve the vision and the values are three or four things which all the people in the organization will use to work together. So I'll give you one simple example. We talked about President John F. Kennedy's vision, which was before the decade is out, we'll put a man on the moon and get the man back. That was his vision. The mission was mission to go to moon. And they had a tremendous set of values at the NASA, where his uh, customer focus, safety was one of their biggest value, that safe working environment, focus on employees, and focus on the mission. Now, the leaders set the strategic direction. They are the one who are very ethical. They teach and enforce ethics. We already discussed, they review and allocate resources. They are master at building cohesive teams. They bring the best talent in the organization and they are not shy at giving the recognition, which is the obligation of the leaders. They coach and mentor next level of leaders. They lead the change. They are very good at communication throughout the organization and best of all, they focus on sustainable growth because doing things for one or two years is okay, but you need to have the organization sustaining for a long period of time and growing. So these are good core competencies. Here are some results from the Harvard Business uh, <clears throat> Review. What leadership skills do you need the most? People, the leaders need to inspire and motivate others, display high integrity and honesty, solve problems, analyze issues, strive for results, et cetera, so on and so forth. This is all about strategic plan. It says I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. So, this is about having a strategic plan for the organization. When the business environment change, when the new regulations come in, and particularly we have the perfect example, due to COVID, whatever strategic plan the organizations had, they have to regroup as a senior group, senior leadership team, and re re-examine their original strategy and come up with a new strategy to survive during the COVID and post-COVID world. One great example was when Alan Malala came from Boeing to Ford Motor Company, he had a new policy to review the strategic plan almost on a weekly basis in real time to be flexible and nimble. Every week, on Friday morning for two hours, all the management people from around the world for Ford Motor Company will be on a conference call and they will review their strategic plan in real time to ensure that they are ahead of the other automobile company and they are trying to strive to become the best automobile company in, on, in the world. Now here I want to share with you some wonderful examples, what we can learn from top organizations in the world. So Google is one of the best company to work for. Uh, average age, less than 30 years, lots of perks, and they treat their employees extremely well. Now this is what they teach, six things they teach to their management people to become effective boss, effective leader. First, mindset and values. 
They subscribe to the theory of growth mindset that intelligence can be cultivated, work done by Professor Carol Dweck at Stanford University. Secondly, they focus on emotional intelligence, which is the sense of self-awareness for everyone in the organization. Third, during manager transition, they provide great support because during the transition, when a person is promoted to the management level, they have to face many challenges and they are frustrated so they can share those challenges and frustrations with their peers and learn from each other. Coaching, very big, active listening, be cognizant of the own and employee mindset, asking open-ended questions and meeting with each and every member on the team at the individual communication style big on giving feedback, consistent feedback across teams, balancing positive and negative feedback, authentic and appreciative, and mainly focusing on sharing the growth opportunities so people can grow in the organization at Google. And in decision-making, they developed a framework which for better decision-making, where the manager will test out their ideas loud and collect feedback from employees and they learn from each other. So these are some of the innovative ways they try to make their management group move towards a good leadership. Here is the leadership lessons from Zappos, which is an online company. And they have created a flat and self-managed organization model called Holacracy, where each and every person working for the company is responsible to understand their own role, how it fits with the role of the others and the team, and how that changes in a dynamic way. Everybody responsible for both leading and supporting the team and everyone responsible for communicating clearly and efficiently, extremely important. And this one article talks about what sets successful CEOs apart from their peers. They do four things differently than the rest of their CEO peers. Decide with speed and conviction. They understand and move with the right amount of speed. They engage for actions by first understanding stakeholder priorities and achieve results by engaging their employees. Third, they adapt proactively. No matter how many <clears throat> playbooks you create, there comes a time where you confront a situation where there is no playbook available. So they need to use their past experience and knowledge to adapt and move on and deliver reliability. That is establish business management systems to achieve the performance through people in the organization. Wonderful lesson, how to become a successful CEO and take the company at a much greater height compared to your peers. Now, one of the things, social responsibility is a big thing for leadership. At the personal level, at the organization level, they need to be focusing on serving the society. And I want to share with you that in India scene, Tata's are one of the most socially responsible organization in the world. If you don't know, they plow back two thirds of the net profit in number of nonprofit organizations they are funding and supporting. Two thirds of the net profit, instead of CSR of 2%, they put 67% for CSR programs. So this is tremendous amount of uh, goodwill they are creating and serving the society and I'm very happy to report that I had the honor to receive the Tata Scholarship to come to US in 1968 for my graduate work at Illinois Institute of Technology here in Chicago. Now, their goal was to send people from India 
those who are bright and send the students overseas, different places around the world, get the best education, come back to India and serve India. In my case, I did not come back, but sitting here, at least I've been working on two social entrepreneurship projects. One started back in 1989, establishing the Blind Foundation for India USA with the mission to prevent and cure blindness and educate and rehabilitate permanently blind people in India. And India has 15 million blind people, one out of three in the world. And so far our team has raised $5 million, performed 210,000 free cataracts, 210,000 free cataracts in India, 132 mobile ones for transport of doctors and patients for cataracts, 10,000 braille kits to children for education, and 1 million school children and 1 million adults had their eyesight checkup. Uh, you can uh, view the foundation website at blindfoundation.org. And this, the, so the first one was free Chakshudan since 1989, 31 years completed. We are in the 32nd year. And second one is the Leadership Excellence Series Free Gyan Dan since 2013, last seven years, soft skills and quality management topics to 50 institutes in 14 states of India. And currently in the, during the COVID, uh, March, April, April, May, and June, 25 sessions will be concluded, and uh, another 15 sessions are planned in July, August, September this year, and reaching out to 8,40,000 people. So this is a free Gyandan project, empowering our youth and professionals to do well in everything they do. So the road to success is not crowded because while most are looking for ways to take, the truly successful people are finding ways to give. And with a giving attitude, every situation is an opportunity for success. So one of the suggestion is that if you want to be a good leader and a great leader, start serving the society, take up a cause which is important to you and serve the society well. So one beautiful quote from great leader, John C. Maxwell, number of books he has written, he says the leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way and shows the way. Now this is about leadership is not about being in charge. Leadership is about taking care of those in your charge. Extremely thoughtful sentence here. Leadership is about taking care of those in your charge. So according to Ralph Waldo Immersion, leaders do not go where the path may lead. They go instead where there is no path and they leave a trail. So they are the trailblazer. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you are already a leader. Now, uh, this is an interesting way of learning leadership lessons from Lord Ganesha. So the priest who, was, uh, who had come to the wedding of my <clears throat> nephew in Hawaii uh, two, two years back, uh, he, during the wedding ceremony, he talked about the leadership lessons from Lord Ganesha. So as we see Lord Ganesha on the right side in the graphics, the Lord has a big head, which signifies source of wisdom. Big ears signify capacity to listen. Flapping ears signify keeping the bad information out. Trunk signifies strength and flexibility. The big stomach signifies ability to hold information, digest and integrate. Small eyes signify ability to contemplate. And Small vehicle signifies humility and control over vasanas. So Ganesha, Lord Ganesha married to Riddhi and Siddhi, still no ego. So a lot of things we can learn from the life of Lord Ganesha. Great leadership lessons. 
Now we are about to be wrapping it up. So a few more slides here from famous football coach from University of Notre Dame in the US. And this is about the US football, not the Indian football, not the soccer, it's the real football. Ability is what you are capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do, but it's the attitude that determines how well you do it. So the focus should be on developing a positive attitude can do, not, I will not do it. I cannot do it. That's a negative attitude. Positive attitude is you look at the situation, try to be volunteering for it and say, yes, I can do it and find a way to get it done. So when we think we know, we cease to learn. This is from Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan who served as a vice chancellor then he became the president of India. I want to share with you a triangle of success at a high level. There are three components, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Knowledge we receive at the university and in colleges, basic theories, information, facts and figures, learn science, etc. Skills we need to continue to develop, goal setting, time management, reasoning, communication, interpersonal skills or teamwork. And we need to work on the attitudes, self-motivation, self-confidence, integrity, honesty, optimism, enthusiasm, cooperation, and commitment. When we combine these three, having a sound knowledge, good skill sets, and a positive attitude, you are moving in the direction of success in anything and everything you do. I want to share with you latest from the World Economic Forum in 2022, what top 10 skills will be needed. And there are four of them which are repeated from 2020 shown on the color coding in the left column. So you could see these are the critical skills needed to be successful in the global workplace. Unfortunately, a lot of these skills are not taught in the curriculum. So when the students graduate, the workplaces have to pick up the slack and they need to be training and retraining them. So it's taking up a lot more resources. So it will be wise and nice to have these critical skills embedded in the curriculum to start with. So by the time students graduate, they have the right skill set to start working and using it in the workplace right away. So one of the things we need to focus on in during our entire life is to improve our communication. Bottom half of the slide is very important to keep in mind, no matter what job you have in life, your success is determined 5% by your academic credentials, 15% by your professional experience, and 80% by your communication skills and substitute communication plus soft skills, leadership, decision-making, time management, meeting management, teamwork, project management, etc. Three components, verbal, written, and presentation, they need to be meaningful, they need to be effective, and each one of them gets better with practice. So practice, practice, practice. Now, uh, when you see this uh, slide deck uh, <clears throat> while uh, on the recording, there are links given to find out your own leadership style by answering 13 questions, whether you are authoritarian, participative, or delegative. And secondly, there is a Myers-Briggs type indicator test, which you can download by downloading the Excel file and answering 74 questions, you will get your own Myers-Briggs type indicator test, which gives you the idea about your inclination and what is your aptitude in terms of working on things. Uh, again, this link you can uh, read at your convenience, seven leadership principles couched out of the life of an eagle, short but beautifully captures what the leaders do. And uh, eagle is a symbol of leadership so in summary, 
leadership is all about influencing, igniting, and inspiring ordinary people to do extraordinary things. So let me repeat, leadership is all about influencing, igniting, and inspiring ordinary people to do extraordinary things. A simple but very profound statement. So with that, uh, lots of references, and we are ready with the question and answers. So I'll stop sharing, and Captain will pose the question to me, and I'll take it forward. So go ahead, Captain. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wara. I think it's a leadership masterclass, and uh, you have covered every gamut of leadership. I, I, I won't say it's only from uh, leadership excellence. You also told them from the beginning how to be a good to great, how you should become excellence, and what it leadership means. It's outstanding uh, compendium of all one should know about leadership. And uh, you could relate so many things what we learned over a period. And I only I wish all the youngsters, uh, the number thousands and thousands of people are watching. I think logged in more than 2,000 people are uh, logged in uh, when I checked up for half an hour back. So it's good. Uh, they should uh, no, really listen. I also got a number of questions which has come, uh, which I would request you to kindly respond uh, so that uh, no, the people, when they go back, they go back with a sense of satisfaction. And I must thank you. It's a really, really wonderful presentation and uh, prepared so well, keeping in mind uh, the viewers in mind. The viewers you clearly identified as the young and students and the future of our country. And you focus on the right point, which is very, very relevant, actually. That uh, really appreciate your uh, endeavor in this regard. I think that has made what is presentation today uh, good to great. Uh, for the people, really appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, one of the questions which has come from YouTube, there are also a lot of questions. Uh, as usual, no, you have a question put on your chat box or watch the program. Others, please, uh, I already got a couple of questions uh, from them uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and webinar. Keep sending them. We have got next another uh, 20, 25 minutes we have uh, so that uh, no, we have to close it at sharp uh, 10.30, 10.25, uh, so that uh, that itself will be midnight for Dr. Vora. So we'll try and accommodate as many questions as possible. Send your questions. Uh, here goes the first question from YouTube, sir. Uh, do the times make the leader or does the leader shape the times? How can a leader infuse people's lives with a sense of purpose and meaning in the context of great leaders? Yeah. So leadership starts with you. So you have to set the example at the personal level first. Because people, you, you say something to people, do this or do that, they just listen to you. But they're watching you, how well you implement what you are saying in your own life. So you have to walk the talk. So leaders who walk the talk, they are the most successful one and people are willing to follow them because they know they are genuine, they are authentic, they mean what they say and they do what they say themselves and not asking others to do things which they don't do themselves. So I'll put it this way, walk the talk. That's the way to inspire your people. Super, sir. Now, we got a question from Dr. Bino, and she wants to know she's really appreciative of the session. Uh, does the remote leadership require unique skills uh, with the present day environment, uh, quite a bit of work from home things happening? How do you develop a, you know, that remote leadership, which is a context which is very, very important to the present environment, your views on yeah. this? So I think in the uh, current situation working remotely, the communication is extremely important. So when I teach uh, project management classes, we review one article from Harvard Business Review, how the remote teams are more productive compared to co-located co teams. And this is where the role of the project leader, project manager becomes extremely critical as a linchpin who keeps everybody glued through the communication. So the communication has to be extremely sharp among the members, uh, between the team leader and all the members who are supporting or reporting to that team leader. And team leader has to do extra effort and extra work to keep everybody engaged and motivated. And the best practice I had seen on a project work, doing some critical work on a short window of time, they create a communication room similar to a war room where everyone who is working on the project is posting in real time their progress. So others can see it in real time 24 seven where the project is heading what is their contribution and what pieces they are bringing on the table to complete the whole. 
So communication is the first thing we need to master and it takes extra importance during the remote leadership. And second thing is trusting your people. When they're working from home, believe me, in general, they work harder than working at a workplace and on site. And I'm sure all of you have experienced that at MMA also, the productivity goes up because you are more focused, less disturbance, and you sacrifice a few more things to make sure that you are delivering what you are supposed to be and do a little more. And I'll give you my personal example as we discuss ahead of time in the beginning that I had a shortfall uh, on a thin ice about 30 years back. I was on crutches for two months and during that time, when I stayed home, working from home at AT&T Bell Labs, my productivity was up by 20%, so 120% productive. Simply because I did not get many calls, I called when I needed some help. Other than that, I was focused on getting my part of the work done and give it to the rest of the team so that they could finish their work. So our focus goes up. We need to make sure we balance it with some physical activity so that we are not glued to the computer all the time. Walk around after an hour, hour and a half away from the computer, relax, uh, recharge your battery, drink some water, uh, eight to 10 glasses per day. Have physical fitness and stamina so that you are more productive. Super. And uh, yes, we also heard from most of the speakers, leaders who spoke on our platform. One thing they insisted is communicate, communicate, communicate. Keep connecting with them. I think that makes you as a good remote leader. So you also mentioned about honesty, integrity, when you are you know, how to develop that sense of faith. Uh, with along to that, there's a question. Honesty and integrity are the best policies. How do you develop this trait in them? Sir? Because uh, I've seen so many of them. They are honest as long as they never had an opportunity to be dishonest. Actually. How does that mean? Sir? <laughs> yeah. So I think both of this uh, honesty and integrity we learn from our own parents at the home front. So the, the, our parents set the example. If they are honest and they have the highest integrity, first we bring that to the workplace. Secondly, we emulate our leaders at the workplace. Are they honest and do they have the integrity? If they have that, we are more likely to have honesty and integrity ingrained in everybody in the organization. And it's the role of the leaders to ensure that the ethics, honesty, integrity, and there's no compromise on all these to be in the organization that is a requirement and must be there. And they continue to reinforce that through continuous training on every yearly basis, checking on and making sure through supervisors and managers that people are following this and those who are violating it, uh, proper actions are taken so that either they change the behavior or they are asked to leave. So, this is extremely important. And then when there is no ethics in the organization, the organizations can be ruined very quickly. And we have many, many examples, particularly during the year 2000, 2002. Here in the US, we had a series of companies, including Enron Energy Corporation, which went up in smoke uh, with the, all the hanky-panky they were doing to sort of check up the stock price they took the Arthur Anderson down with them, world's number one accounting company, which was in Kahoot with them. So when you don't follow the ethics, eventually you will lose. So ethics, honesty, integrity starts from home, needs to be reinforced throughout the work life. And we need to take it upon ourselves to be honest, ethical, and have the highest integrity, which will be in the long term will be the best solution. In fact, uh, youngsters, uh, should, uh, the young leaders should have the courage and conviction to question if you think there's the dishonesty in the system without any worry of what is going to happen to them. That's a super uh, input from you, sir. Thank you. And uh, sir, you also spoke about seven habits of Stephen Covey. In your opinion, which you think is the most important habit, seven habits developing at a time for any youngster is going to be a big challenge. What yeah. you think one single focus uh, youngster should focus and keep improving others? Yeah, so habit number five, first to understand, understand before being understood. 
so you understand the perspective of the other side first and then try to create your response to make sure that ultimately it's a win win not a win lose situation so when there is a win win situation by understanding the perspective of the other party you are in a best position to offer the right solution and have best collaboration best interdependence so out of seven skills that number 5 or <coughs> habit number 5 is the best one one need to keep working on it super sir there's a question from one youngster young student rupesh uh, you want to know it's a, while the previous session his question is is as abraham lincoln did does firing is the right move uh, by a leader what is the right way to handle the ineffective people providing training and motivation will it work i think this is where i think i may you may like to share jack welch uh, thing where is the top 10 the, love, the bottom 10% he was really eliminating uh, he doesn't keep but we have uh, another indian leader sunil bharti mittal who doesn't believe in that he says once somebody joins the organization they belong to organization make sure that how you take along is as a leader is yours so how do you uh, manage these two conflicting views of two great leaders and with with what uh, rupesh want to know sir yeah Yeah, I think uh, so, so. The issue is this: uh, Jack Welch was known as a neutron Jack, where he was ejecting the last bottom ten percent every year to replenish the pool. That's a very ruthless approach. And by the way, when Jack Welch left, that practice was stopped at GE, but they did not subscribe to that practice. It was his personal baby; it was cut off. Now. the point is i uh, first of all need to make every effort to get the best person in the organization so here i want to put a plug for <clears throat> the great book by gallup organization uh, first break all the rules and that book has a tremendous knowledge and tremendous value to be added for the hr how to find the best people uh, by focusing on the talent by motivating people to do the right thing macro management not micro management and finding a right position for the people rather than keep promoting them upward so there are beautiful nuggets from that book and if we have first made every effort to get the best people in then we can couple that with the theory of strength another gallops work which is find out what is your strength and get the best assignment lined up with your strength in that case the person is going to have excellent output and they don't generally need even supervision so finding the right people leveraging their strengths and then at the end if somebody doesn't work out that means either they are misfit to the position or maybe they are misfit for the organization they are not blending in so in that last case in rare case you have to use the hr function to give them a notice that unless you change your behavior you will not be working for us so it's a step by step process and this requires thoughtful actions on the part of the leaders and the management team unfortunately we do not do all these steps right we hire anyone and everyone and then we are not focusing on their strengths give them some assignment where they are in their weakness area so the output is not good team's output is suboptimal then company doesn't make good money because customer is unhappy no new projects come so this is a wrong direction so it requires a good effort to do it the right way and those companies which do it they are benefiting it tremendously so the people are the resource you need to treat them well if you don't they will go away and they will go somewhere else they in fact many time the organizing people leave not because of they are getting less paid they are getting they leave because of the poor leadership for them right so you also yes. mentioned about uh, jim collins uh, mm-hmm. and you also said good to great so what is the effort one required to put in to be from good to great and when being good itself is so difficult and as a young managers as a young leader Uh, so what's your view that how one should really focus from good to great that is what is really really difficult first thing you have to yeah. become good so how how does he do that yeah so first of all i think we need to be managing our own time so what they say if you want to be a good leader 
focus 50% of your time managing yourself. So if we can't manage ourselves, how can we manage others? So that's the basic understanding. So you make good use of your time. Secondly, connect with your people. Don't try to be working as a boss, but try to be a coach. What do the coach do? They find out whose strength is what, and they allow those people to use their strength to the maximum extent. So when you are working in the organization and you are in a leadership position, you want to be known as a coach, not as a boss. Secondly, you will use all the resources in a wise way to help people achieve the objectives in a given time frame using the resources of the organization. If we do that successfully, you will begin to get great results for the organization. You will get the credit because people have done the work under your leadership and you share the credit widely among the people who help you achieve the objectives. Rather than holding the credit, share the credit because when you share it, people get motivated and those people are very loyal. They'll come back and reward you with more and more good results. And that's what sets you apart from a run of the mill leader to the good leader to the great leader. The context of the present uh, situation, what's happening around the world, how do the leaders ensure that employees remain engaged when they are worried about their future? Because there's always uncertainty when the company is not doing well, how many are doing well. There's always a sense of fear amongst them that I may be fired, I may not perform, how to you know, exceed and excel in the performance. How, how, what is the one counseling you want to give to the leaders to make sure their employees are well looked after? Yeah, I think they need to be honest with the people. They have to level with them. Don't sugarcoat it. Tell them exactly what the situation is. People know it, but they need to hear it from the leaders. I'll give you one example. In one company I worked for a number of years, we used to see the financials and upcoming events unfolding in the Wall Street Journal rather than hearing from our own leaders. So if you don't trust your people and you just people get the news from the financial outlets, that means your leaders have no faith or trust in you. So one, you need to create that trust and honesty and telling people what the situation is, whether it's black or white, tell them exactly what's going to happen. And also very important that we are all in this problem together. What do you think we should do so that we can overcome? And also we begin to build towards post COVID when we are going to be coming out on the upside of the business cycle are we ready and what are the deficiencies we need to plug the holes for? So that kind of uplifting things the leaders need to do rather than talk about a doomsday scenario all the time because that's depressing to everybody in the organization. So they need to be optimist. They need to state the clearly the current situation. Most important, ask people, what are their opinions? How can we work together to come out of this difficulty and do better as we move forward? So that's where I would leave it at that. Now, uh, this another question which has come. He says, uh, how do you define a good leader in the eyes of his subordinates, in the eyes of the superiors, and especially in the eyes of the millennials? Because millennials have a different outlook about the leader while uh, the, the people above you have a different opinion about your leadership traits and your subordinates have. So how do you match and mix all these three together to be a good uh, leader? Yeah. So I think uh, you need to have some uh, solid bedrock values as a leader, which you do not compromise on. And those are the ones we already talked about. Ethics, honesty, integrity, passion something you are passionate about and you allow your people to develop their own passion. So these are about four or five things you must have. No compromise on those. And then you begin to pick up additional traits as needed, depending on the situation. So whatever domain you are in, if it requires some additional things, you keep working on it, but have this foundation of honesty, integrity, ethics, passion for yourself, 
allowing your people to use their passion to achieve fantastic results. So that would be the short answer. Uh, it's a very interesting question. He says, I'm an MBA student uh, and a lot of advertisements come seeking uh, specific characteristic traits and strength. But I'm unable to, uh, I'm not in a habit of constant self-analysis. How do I find out what I might be good at it actually? Because there's so many traits that ask people get confused actually. I know. So I think uh, the be best thing to do is uh, use this Strengths Finder 2.0 from Gallup organization which allows you to find your top five strengths. Uh, there is a ebook available, I was told, for 1,700 rupees. And by the way, I don't own any stock in Gallup. So if you buy the book, I will not get rich. If you don't buy the book, I won't get a poor. So that's a disclaimer. Now that particular book, I have used it almost 30 years ago. And uh, that book is so, not 30, uh, last about 15 plus years I've been using it. I took the test and uh, we had invited the person who was the co-author of that book and uh, at at and Bell Labs. So what we learned from it is that once we understand what our strengths are, we need to find out that work we do, are we using our strengths? So I have five strengths. One, I'm more like an arranger, uh, like a or the symphony. I am the conductor of a symphony. I could see a lot of moving pieces, how to arrange them to get beautiful symphony. Secondly, I'm an achiever, then I'm a learner, I'm a maximizer, and I'm a relator. Each one of us have five strengths, which the book will tell you out of the database of 34 strengths of successful people from around the world. You put that on your resume just below the objective and also start looking at the opportunities where you can use your strengths 100%. And I'll give you one example. We have covered it in the teamwork, but a ping pong player, the coach found out he was so good with the forehand stroke. Coach decided not to worry about backhand stroke, give him tremendous amount of forehand stroke practice and that player won the world championship for ping pong. So when you work with your strengths, so understanding what your strengths are is the first step. Secondly, leveraging your strengths in anything and everything we do, including our career planning, doing day-to-day -day work, both professionally and personally, we will be very satisfied and very successful because we work with our strengths. We are more likely to get the best results because strength is ability to consistently define near perfect performance all the time. In a given time, I think I'll accommodate two last questions. But what you said is absolutely true. That's where MMA is India. We have taken MMA online student membership, as I mentioned last time too. And we bring in if one online student membership they take, they get connected with MMA activities. They will really develop all the traits. They will not have a doubt what they are having at the present because if they should be sincere to the purpose of what we charge. Like MMA being a not-for-profit and charitable, we really charge 500 rupees for a student membership per year where we'll offer some 8 to 10 workshops for a group of under students from the college. But we also offered uh, something for uh, individual students you want to become. Some students may not be able to part of a group and studying. Then you want to pursue. He can also become an online student membership. I think they should keep in touch with MMA. Venkat will be more than happy to guide them. And because if you get connected, I think the amount of programs what we do on webinars, uh, uh, you can sit at your own place and you, you want to be a online management trainee. Uh, we have picked up some excellent trainees uh, at the moment. About 50 people are working with us. Our intention is to make them the group, give them mentor, give, put them, make them project report, make them a great communicator. What all the traits you said, we are trying to focus them. I'm, I'm quite sure you are interacting in future with you. will tell us what we should be really working on the students so that make them from good to great uh, when they visit the college and become smart. So two last questions, as I promised you. Uh, the first question, sir. Uh, so is it possible to generalize uh, great leaders? Surely when every man, a leader job is different and demand different skills and responsibilities. How you can't generalize as a leader when each one skill is different uh, type of uh, no requirements are this. How do you make him a good manager, a good leader? Yeah, so I think we are talking about situation leadership. So every situation requires certain ways for leaders to act, take decisions, 
and lead the organization at that point. <clears throat> but keep in mind the foundation has to be still the same. Honesty, integrity, ethics, passion for getting something done, respect for your people, respect for your customers. So those are the values. If those are ingrained in a person, that person, he or she will be more likely to succeed in any scenario, whether they are working with organization A, B, or C in any different situation, they will come out ahead at the end of the day. So foundation has to be there. So it's like a house, right? We need a house to be standing, the foundation upon which the house stands. Then you can have different bells and whistles, different floors, different number of uh, rooms, different decor and all that. So those are additional things, but without foundation, nothing will stand. So that's why my sincere request is, if you really want to be a good leader and want to become excellent leader, develop some fundamental foundational skills as a leader, have those things continue to practice to be good at it. And then depending on the situation, you pick up additional things. So the one YouTube, we talked about the leadership that uh, excellent talent and excellent uh, characteristics. When you listen to it, you will get a lot of ideas what the good leaders do in different situations. So there are lots and lots of examples. In a very simple way, it's uh, narrated uh, in about uh, four minutes of that video, the first video today. Great, uh, situation leadership, beautifully brought it out. Uh, one last question for this uh, evening and before we say goodnight to you, sir, and uh, which is very, very relevant to today's uh, topic is that, is it true that leadership cannot be taught? No, leadership can be taught. So there are no born leaders. <laughs> so what otherwise, I, uh, otherwise uh, I think India and the uh, world are producing so many children, we should be the greatest country leading the nation, actually, with so much of population. If that is yeah. true, I yeah. totally agree yeah. with you. Sir. Yeah. So I think uh, leadership is a skill which can be taught depending on whether you are un we are ready to be taught. So it's up to us to decide whether you want to be a leader and if you want to be a leader, there are so many avenues. We can read up on the great people who are the great leaders around the world, their biography, autobiography, et cetera. Then we read some of the articles written about them. We see some of the leaders in our own organizations, how they behave, how they lead, what uh, good values they bring on the table. All those things we can continue to learn and become better at what we do. So this is a lifelong pursuit. It doesn't happen in a instantly. So it's not like a, you give the key to something and it just starts and it takes off like a rocket. No, it's a systematic way of understanding the foundation, building on it. And best thing I would like to bring back my original model that if you really want to learn about leadership, get yourself involved in the learning then you start applying some of the things which you have learned and share it widely with others and exchange. You learn from each other do's and don'ts. And this is how we can all progress together and take the entire society at the higher level. So rather than becoming the island in the ocean, try to take everybody in the right direction so everybody moves up rather than you are the only one standing and others are all struggling. Great, great insight, sir. Uh, as usual, is a lovely thing, uh, masterclass lessons, as I mentioned earlier. And one of the objective of today's session is to only prove it to the students and whoever asked this question from the YouTube, where students, uh, leadership can be taught. That's why we are putting so much effort. Uh, that's why Dr. Manohara is, you know, at late night, 12 o'clock at night, he, he is engaging with you and answering all the questions which are relevant to you today. If you want to be a great leader, keep listening, keep learning and be a continuous learner all through the life. And the lessons what today um, Dr. Manohar has shared with you are golden lessons which you will rarely get in your life. You get an opportunity to listen to some of the outstanding leaders. Please uh, you know, keep them as a reference point for you. Keep going, keep learning. That will make you an outstanding human being, outstanding citizen, 
then automatically become a great leader thank you dr manuvara you have been uh, as usual uh, fantastic today uh, bringing out uh, some of the excellent uh, points which for a leadership uh, excellence and uh, we are indeed grateful to you for sparing your time to be with us uh, uh, this morning here and for you in the evening at usa and we really look forward to your continued advice and endeavor because we want to make uh, the learning for our management students really enjoyable fun and uh, should be a, add a lot of value to them and i think that will make uh, the youngsters uh, of your tomorrow future leaders uh, a great thinkers thank you so much thank you all the viewers all 2400 people have watched this program live i'm sure a lot of people watch this program on the, thank you also all the partner colleges which joined us in bringing your students because this is a event where you should focus and bring in more number of people to come and watch for your benefit we kept this recording for next one year in our website do watch them if some of your colleagues some of your students uh, by chance miss watching this i think you should tell them if you want to be a master class on leadership watch this program i am sure it will only do a lot of good to them watch those videos what uh, dr ward has told you because due to copyright situation we can't really play those videos for you because you are very very law abiding as far as the mma is concerned that the reason we want you to watch at your own place and be a great leader stay safe stay enjoy don't violate the rules and regulations don't violate especially the social distancing norms and keep safe because today together only we can really fight this uh, virus and till then uh, don't worry about what's happening online not uh, happening on offline you will be a great leader wherever you are if you have inclination to learn thank you dr vara uh, thank you venkat yeah. for bringing in so many people in line thanks sundar and mohan uh, especially who have been in constant communication uh, educational institutions you have seen the way the mma has taken initiative to communicate with you communicate 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 our endeavor is to bring you in a large number because if you are turned out if you have made sure people listen to this important lectures what has been done by dr wara i think we have done our job and i'm sure you will be uh, and as as i say always we enjoyed bringing you this program as much as dr so you are muted sir thank you are muted you are muted you are to unmute captain La last last couple of sentences Yeah, got now, un yeah, un unmuted, uh, automatically muted because this is beyond already ten thirty is over now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Ora, and good night, okay. and uh, thanks everybody for joining, and uh, have a great and safe day, and thank you, and bye bye. Uh, Venkat, yeah, you want so, to add uh, anything more? Uh, go, yes, go sir, to sir, thank you. you. Sir. Yeah, thank you, Captain uh, Vijay Kumar ji. Thank you, Captain Doctor Venkat Raman ji, uh, Mr. Sundar, uh, Mr. Shankar. uh we appreciate uh, all the tremendous professional work you do at mma so i'm very delighted to be with you and i look forward to work with you as we go forward for your online program with the students for their empowerment so with that i wish all of you lot of professional and personal success and all the best thank you, thank you. good night and stay safe good night so have a good night sleep so bye bye good night thanks everybody stay safe bye 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 bye, bye.